So we will start by making a four color Skinner blend. And I will show you a little trick when you're trying to make a um, several color Skinner, Skinner blend. Let's say that you cut it, it's on the thickest setting and you cut squares out of it. Just place them like this. So I have sunshine yellow, cadmium yellow, uh, ultramarine and violet. And then um, flatten them a little bit, cut in two and then place it them one on top of the other like this. And then just create your Skinner blend and of course get it in a long sheet. I will post a link to my Skinner blend tutorial. And then I will cut it in length so that I can make two jelly rolls, one with the lightest end in the middle and the other one with the darkest end in the middle. So they should be pretty much of the same size. Consolidate them well and then simply uh, cut them in two. They just Cut them in two and then um, flatten them a little bit so they would get about an inch, an inch and a half anywhere from that um, in size. And after you flatten them, then you'll have to manipulate them uh, to get uh, more or less in a squarish shape and you do that by simply uh, pulling on the corners like that. And then what we will use for the Mokumegane also will be uh, black and white. So get a square on the thickest setting of each black and white and then thin it out as much as you can. And you see I am just gently pulling on it to make it even thinner. And then we'll just alternate the slices of the uh, Skinner, ro Skinner blend jelly rolls and slices of black and white. You see I put one slice of the one jelly roll on white then I will place that on a slice of the other jelly roll and then I will place that on black and then I'll just repeat. So again the first jelly roll white and then the second jelly roll and black and once you have your little stack done you will have to um, flatten it until you can get it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting once you get it on the thickest setting in one direction because you have pretty much a squarish thing like this. Then turn it 90 degrees and go one thickness down. If they are not perfectly um, a fitting, just pull a little bit until uh, once you cut them in four, all the quarters will fit. And this will be your stack. So first I'm going to deform it and I'm using a comb. You know, I love that. And then my little bead poking tool and then just some rounds and my ball stylus and I'm going to do that not just on the front but also on the back that is a linoleum carving tool and then I will be um, pulling it in consolidating it uh, smaller so that all the deformations I did there, they will get deformed themselves. And once you get your stack back to the one and a quarter uh, inch square, the same as the pieces that you have cut with your cutter, then you slice it. Uh, try to get as many full slices as possible and then bring them to the same uh, thickness by rolling them between uh, wax paper sheets with your roller 
and this will be the base for our thing now i am using the gf art uh, cutters but uh, you can make this shape if you get the round cookie cutters and then i'll also be using the oval uh, i'm not sure if this was a makings or a scalpy set anyway uh, this is a makings uh, texture and i will post the link to it in the description as usual and you see i first cut uh, cut out with the oval and i place a piece of the mokumegane also cut out with the oval and then i will place this back to back with the other half of the texturized uh, white and i will simply cut the shape using clean wrap so i can get nice edges a little bit rounded now of course it will not cut very well and uh, again my advice is don't dwell too much on fixing these edges because it takes only a few uh, swipes with sandpaper to make perfect edges and then do the same thing only using the next smaller cutter for the ear earrings place on tile to bake and bake it for 40 minutes at manufacturer's recommended temperature. Now while those are baking, let's make the bangle. And I decided to make a little bit of a wider bangle. It's two inches wide and I'm going to place it on a jar. And I know that the main thing with the jar is how hard it is to take it out of the jar. And I will show you the full process of what I do. Now you see I placed slices a little bit overlapping each other and then I press them together and I will roll and burnish through wax paper until I get a perfectly smooth surface. And why I call this, <coughs> excuse me, why I call this alien landscape is that I don't know but it looks to me like there are all kinds of landscapes that look alienish. So um, I will put scrap clay, that will be my base, and the only thing here is to cut proper edges and I'm taking as reference the edge of the jar. As I said, I prefer to work with jars because I can see inside if I trapped any air bubble. And um, I bake that, I bake that for 20 minutes, after which I am placing bacon bond and I will place my mokumegane veneer on it. And again, make sure you do not tra trap any air bubbles. It is a little bit difficult to tape how I put this on the jar but I will be doing my best and smooth the edges join them uh, well together I normally use my roller to do that and it's fairly easy to push them together and then use the roller over uh, them on the sides it's fairly easy to cut proper sides you just uh, push the veneer over the edge and then trim it with your rigid blade and again another thing don't on this one as well don't um, worry too much about making perfectly 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 straight uh, edges on that bangle because again you can sand and have perfect uh, edges after which uh, sand it and buff it on the jar and now I'll show you how I remove it from the jar I use one of those fruit peeler uh, knives you have to be careful the jars most of the time they are slightly wider at the bottom to avoid them toppling so always try to remove the bangle uh, on the side with the mouth of the jar and gently insert the uh, blade of the knife under it 
and then try to move it. Now, if it does not want to move too much, uh, get your heat gun and gently heat it. It doesn't have to be heated to the point that uh, you cannot touch it. Just a little bit warm, it will give it enough flexibility that it will slide fairly easily off the jar. And careful with the heat gun. Remember, it can get up to 700 degrees. You do not want that hot air to come on your skin because you can get fairly badly burned. And again, I'm using the, the fruit peeler and as you can see, it comes off the jar fairly easily. I mean, if I can do it with my hands, <laughs> uh, anybody can do it. Then I'm going to take a little bit more white and that is on the third thinnest setting and I'm placing whatever leftovers of the Mokumegane I had and just roll it and squiggle it a bit. That will be for the backing of the bangle. And make it into a stack and then I will slice the stack Yes, I am deforming it a little bit too, because I want to be uh, some kind of matching with the um, earrings and the pendant. As you can see, I tried to make this tutorial not very for a not very advanced level. And once I have it, I will put a little bit more of the scraps of the Mokumegane that I have and then I will simply flatten it uh, get it through the pasta machine I want to go uh, pretty much as thin as I can get because I don't want my bangle to become too small to fit and then see I'm measuring it and then I will place bacon bond on the inside of the bangle and place the backing on it. Again, a lot of care not to trap air pockets because they don't look pretty. One of these days I'll show you how to get rid of air pockets even after you baked them because there is a way to fix that. Um, scrape off the excess clay and then bake it for 20 minutes. You don't need more than 20 minutes because it's a very, very thin uh, veneer for the backing. And I'm smoothing out with alcohol as usual. And I will show you on this one how easy it is to get a very nice and neat edge. Now, while that is baking, I'm going to put some resin on the little cutouts, Mokumegane cutouts, on the pendant and on the earrings. And I'm using on this one the Lisa Pavelka, not because I like it very much, because honestly it's my least favorite UV resin, just because it shrinks so much that you have to apply and reapply. But it's got a really easy pouring tip, and um, I know I need to get some uh, syringes to have for the other resins and then simply just use a toothpick to get it to the uh, edges all the way and then place it in your UV lamp or out in the sun for it to cure and remember if you have any air bubbles you get rid of them by using a lighter and passing it very fast over the surface of the resin now my bangle is baked so I am taking first uh, 240 grit using it on the edge of the bangle and you'll see that I'm not uh, wasting a lot of time on it it works very easily and very fast Then I will move to 400, then to 800. 
And you can honestly stop at 800. I just went higher to uh, all the way to 2000. And then I'm going to just reinforce the, um, uh, the buffing. I went once again over the surface of the bangle with the 800 and then with the uh, 1200 and the 2000 and reinforced the buff. Of course, you can varnish it or you can use uh, Tiny Pandora's um, a UV uh, resin that can be applied on uh, curved surfaces, but I just uh, buffed it. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Now on the um, pendant and the earrings, I am going to use my most favorite of all methods because it doesn't apply a lot of me doing pinching motions. <laughs> and that is, I'm going to use pinch bales. And what you need to do is to make just small beginnings of holes. You don't have to uh, drill through the whole uh, piece just to make beginnings of holes so that the little pins that are on the pinch bales uh, go in and then here you have to be very careful hold on to the pinch bale while you're widening it uh, so it wouldn't break and i do this usually in several stages so that the metal doesn't get too hot and wouldn't break whenever it's about a wider uh, pieces and it's enough if you manage to get the, um, the pin in one hole and then the other one will slide very easily over it. And you don't really need to use any kind of uh, varnish on them unless you want them shiny, but I prefer them like this with just that little uh, wave texture. Now, obviously, on the pendant, all that you need to do is to put whatever you want, a leather cord, a chain, whatever you decide. And uh, I connected the um, pinch bail on the earrings with a double coil jump ring directly to the ear wire. And again, careful when you place the ear wire to not put it backwards. I managed not to on this one. I didn't put backwards a single one. I'm so proud of myself. But uh, yeah, very, very easy as you can see um, to put the stuff together like this. I don't have to do any wrap loops, anything. Just simply attach the pinch bail to the French wire using a double coil jump ring. I prefer double coils because they provide more um, safety. I'm sure that they will not be opening. And there you go. A little alien landscape jewelry set. Happy clean!